Essex leprosity fracture. The definition of Essex leprosity. Essex leprosity fracture is a radial head fracture with disruption of the interosseous membrane and an injury to the distal radio ulnar joint. Injury of the distal radio ulnar joint can be a subluxation or dislocation of that joint. The Essex leprosity injury affects the axial stability of the forearm. It's an injury to the interosseous membrane and the triangular fibrocartilage complex, which can result in proximal migration of the radius. The triangular fibrocartilage of the wrist is the primary stabilizer for the DRUJ. This Essex leprosity fracture is difficult to diagnose and the physician must restore the stability of the elbow and the DRUJ. Radial head fractures are a common elbow fracture. It constitutes about one-third of the fractures. The mechanism is usually a fall on the outstretched hand. The elbow will be in extension and pronation. There will be axial load transmitted from the wrist to the radial head, which is combined with a valgus force, and that will create a fracture of the radial head. The radial head provides two types of stability, valgus stability. The radial head is secondary restraint to valgus load at the elbow, and longitudinal stability. So it prevents proximal migration of the radius, and there is some contribution from the interosseous membrane. Loss of this longitudinal stability occurs when the radial head fractured plus injury to the DRUJ and the interosseous membrane will be ruptured in this situation. In this situation, the radial head should be fixed or if the radial head is unreconstructable, replace the radial head by a radial head prosthesis, but never resect the radial head alone in this situation without replacing it. Radial head excision will result in proximal migration of the radius and the unnocurable impingement with distal radioulnar joint instability. In reality, when you go to surgery with these cases, the fracture looks more comminuted than expected. The problem is not all hospitals are equipped with radial head prosthesis. So if you take the patient for radial head work, make sure you have the implant in-house. You can excise the radial head if all ligaments are intact. The problem is you may not know the distal radio ulnar joint is involved. So what are the types of radial head fracture? There is a Mason classification. Type 1, non-displaced, no block to the forearm rotation. The treatment is early motion. Type 2, displaced, more than 2 mm, and the treatment is usually fixation. Type 3, comminuted, displaced, irreparable, and the treatment, usually replacement. Replacement will be with a metallic modular prosthesis. Excision alone can be done in some situation. It is rare, but before you excise the radial head, you must make sure all ligaments are intact, that you examined the patient, and there is no distal radio ulnar joint injury or elbow injury. So if you have a patient with a comminuted radial head fracture, it's probably safer to replace it. Type 4 is a fracture of the radial head associated with dislocation of the elbow joint. 
The treatment is usually a tent reduction of the elbow joint with fixation of the fracture or excision of the radial head and prosthetic replacement if the fracture is unreconstructable, cannot be repaired. Excision of the radial head alone is contraindicated in elbow dislocation or in Essex leprosy fracture. How do you examine for the Essex leprosy injury? Well, you're going to examine the DIUJ, but pick the rest for tenderness and for excessive translation of the DIUJ. This is a very difficult examination. Check the x-rays carefully. You will examine and palpate the interosseous membrane for tenderness. You may want to do the squeeze test similar to what you do for a high syndesmotic injury of the ankle and check if there's any tenderness there. So you may want to get dynamic CT scans before surgery. It may show you some instability at the distal radio ulnar joint. In surgery, you will do the radius pole test. More than 3 mm translation is concerning for longitudinal forearm instability. Surgery for the radial head fractures is usually done through the posterolateral coker approach between the ACU and the unconius muscle or through the lateral approach. Watch the safe zone for implant insertion to avoid impingement and loss of rotation. Technical aspect for a prosthesis. The radial head prosthesis usually is cementless and act as a stiff spacer until the ligaments heal, so it doesn't have to be well fed into the canal and you can use the modular system to check for the appropriate height make sure you don't overstuff it how do you know if you overstuffed it or not visually assess widening of the lateral ulnohumeral joint and make sure you are not blocking extension In general, if there are less than three fragments, OIF is good. If there are greater than three fragments, prosthesis is better. When you do the surgery, there are some tactics for the surgery. You want to keep the lateral ulnar collateral ligament, the ulnar humeral ligament intact, and they stay above the equator of the radial head. When you stay above the equator in the radial head, there is less likely that you will injure the LUCL ligament. And make sure you understand the position of the posterior interosseous nerve, which is about 4 cm. The posterior interosseous nerve crosses the proximal radius from anteriorly to posteriorly within the supranatal muscle, 4 cm distal to the radial head. And when you do the surgery, you want to pronate the forearm to protect the posterior osseous nerve. Pronation pulls the nerve anteriorly away from the surgical field. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.